we can now prove the complexity of the free space and get the running time of our algorithm and also the description of the algorithm. Let's start with the union complexity. If we have a collection of convex polygonal pseudodisks with n vertices in total, then their union has at most two n vertices. These convex polygonal pseudodisks, that's exactly our configuration polygons. How do we prove this? We want to charge every vertex of a union to a polygon vertex, such that every polygon vertex is charged at most twice. We can do that easily for all the vertices that lie on the boundary of one of those polygons and that also lie on the boundary of our union. But for these boundary crossings we cannot so easily do this. However, every boundary crossing means that for one of those two polygons that cross, there has to lie at least one vertex inside the other polygon. Because it cannot cross through the whole thing, because they are pseudodisks. So we have one interior vertex that we don't count for the boundary of the whole thing, that we can charge these two boundary crossings to. So in detail, if we have a corner, then we charge it to itself. If we have a corner that's inside, where we get two boundary crossings, then we both charge them to this corner. If we have a corner that is somewhere here on the boundary that intersects the boundary of another polygon, then we can again charge it to itself, and the other intersection be charged to the point. So it, again, it only gets two charges because now we don't have two boundary crossings that we have to charge to someone else, because the first one can charge to itself. And it can also be that we have something like this, we have a boundary crossing of the orange here, two of the red ones here, the red ones charge to this one, the orange charges to this one up here. Let's summarize. If we have a constant complexity convex robot and we want to translate it among a set of disjoint polygonal obstacles with n edges in total, then we can pre-process the set of polygonal obstacles in order of n log squared n time such that for any start and goal position we can compute in linear time a collision-free path for the robot if it exists. How does this algorithm work? Well, there are a few steps. The first one is we need the obstacles to be convex, so if they are not, then we just triangulate them. We can do that with the result of lecture 3 in order of n log n time. Then for every polygon that we get, or for all of these convex polygons, we compute the configuration polygon. And this we can do in linear time. So the complexity from the first to the second part it increases, because if we triangulate an obstacle, then we might get several obstacles and uh, some corners belong to many of them. They only interior disjoint, but not boundary disjoint. However, we know from lecture 3 that the total complexity of this triangulation is still linear, so we still have a linear number of corners in our obstacles, so we still have linear complexity then we can still do this in linear time. And then the tough part is we need to compute the union. And how would we compute the union of all these convex polygons? We can do that using divide and conquer. We just divide the number of polygons into two subsets, then recursively find their union, then we get two shapes that are just polygons that are not convex and for two non-convex polygons we can compute their union using a sweep line algorithm. So we basically merge our solution by sweeping. We just take those two uh, polygons, we use a sweep line from top to bottom and then we always have to make sure yeah, what is inside, what is outside, but we find all the intersection points by the sweep line. And for the time that we need here, 
we can use the result that the number of intersection points we have is linear. So we only find a linear number of intersection points here. So in our divide and conquer, we divide it into log n levels and we need order of n log n time for each of them. So this whole thing takes order of n log squared n time. This is where the squared n comes from. And then we only have to find a path in the complement and this is for a point and that we did in the very first part that we know how to do. We can again do our pre-processing in order of n log n time for all those convex polygons that we get now in the forbidden space and then find a path there using the trapezoidization. That's it about motion planning for robots. I hope my voice was not too terrible this lecture and I thank you for watching.